It's fun. The truth is, I'm glad to see a small group because I really believe in a year from now it will be could be a thousand people because of what what we have is so exciting. So I want to make sure this presentation it's very informal. Be free to stop to stop me anytime if you have any questions. If you don't understand, you don't get it. Stop me, and we'll we'll try to cover that and, and move on. So my presentation this morning is more about the science and the development of where the web came from. Just so you can be, it'll be better, easier for you to make presentations if you really understand where, how this all, how it was developed. So that's, that's what we're gonna focus on this morning. So, and really we're gonna talk about the power within. The first thing I wanna tell you everybody here is that the body is truly amazing. The technology we're going to present today is pretty great, but it's the body that's amazing. And this technology, all that it does is help the body do what it's supposed to do. So I'm not get, So don't let me get caught up and think this is the most greatest thing ever invented. Your body is the greatest thing ever invented. This is just here to help the body. So, and we're going to talk about uh, three different things today. Talk about the cell boost technology. We're going to talk about the supplements, which Joe will talk a lot about, and then the uses and applications of the web. So the first thing is you've all seen this picture, and it's pretty. It's an important picture, and and I want I want everybody to read this quote. And I want to get in your way. You can spend an entire lifetime pruning and doing other tasks above the ground, making a tree beautiful for a season. But the only predict predictable way to have a healthy and strong tree is to treat below the surface of the roots. Root health, like cellular health, is the secret to create the lasting benefits of strength and performance. And it's, and it's really true. You know, last time when I was in China with my friends, we stopped at a temple. And I bought this stack of money for $2. And this looks just like a hundred dollar yuan. Looks just like it. Like you'd go to jail if you made those here. But the reason for this is then you go over to the fire and you pull one of these out. Sorry, pour one, pour one of these out. And you throw it in the fire and the smoke takes us to your ancestors that have passed on. And it probably does something for that purpose, but it really doesn't do anything. It may do something for that purpose. I mean, and it's fun to do, and I did it with them because that's important to them. But this is kind of like working up here, and we're not talking about that. We're talking about everything you down is at the cellular level. And cellular level means that it happens slowly, not fast. America, you know, we want to just take a pill and be better in 20 minutes. But that doesn't do anything. We're talking about cellular change, lifestyle change, really making a difference. It's long-lasting. So, like I said, the human body is amazing when cells are healthy, but there's a lot of things that affect our body. One, the foods we eat, and, and everybody knows about issues there. The chemicals we ingest, right here, this isn't doing me any favors. Also, pollution. These are things that it's almost impossible to get away from. I'm sorry if I keep getting in your way. Impossible to get away from. But those are the things that actually take, do damage or take, make an impact upon our body and you can't get away from them. Any questions? Stop me anytime. So we're gonna talk about science for a few minutes and it's important for you to understand this. So the entire, your entire body, every cell, everything in your body is made up of atoms. Which you have your protons, your neutrons, electrons. One's neutral, one's positive, one's negative. And these atoms are what create a molecule. And a molecule then become, at, become cells. And we're going to talk about this. This is important. You think this is important how the body works. And by the way, those are electrical. Now, you're, the human body has about 37 trillion cells. That's estimate. Uh, Craig may have a few more than me. 
He's bigger. I don't have one. <laughs> See, Emily may have a few less. But anyway, so it's a complex system. So, for example, there's a red blood cell. And this is more what a typical cell looks like. And it gets complicated here in a minute. So, uh, each human cell has about 10 to the 14th, that's 10 with 14 zeros behind it, atoms in a human cell. I mean, our body is complex. So remember, there's estimated 37 trillion cells in the body. And each cell has 10 to the 14th in atoms. And by the way, if you don't want to take notes, I'll print out certain parts of this and, or email it to you to make your life easy. So, let's do the math. So, there are 37 trillion cells and there's 10 to the 14th atoms. That's the estimated number of atoms in your body. So, I guess what I'm telling you, the body is complex. It can do amazing things. We think we know a lot. We, there, there's much more we don't know than we do know. But remember, each one of these atoms is like a little battery. It's a positive negative charge. It's like a little battery. And that's why your body can be moved. The, that's why cells can be electrically moved or manipulated. Because everything in your body is electrical. Every single part of your body is electrical. That's how it communicates. That's how it moves. One of my arm moves because my brain said electrical signal and those atoms connected all the way to here and said move your arm. That's all that happened. And that's the expansive energy. Anybody surprised by this? We're complex human beings. So, what is cellular energy? Cellular energy is the ability to work or cause change. And that's important though because everything we're talking about is cellular energy. So, to heal your body requires cellular energy. To lift my arm requires cellular energy. Everything we do requires cellular, cellular energy. And remember, because we, we're going to talk about this again, ability to do work or cause change. So, the molecule inside the cell that creates energy is called an ATP molecule. And just to simplify, what happens when that molecule drops one of the phosphate compounds, that's what releases energy. So your body can, every time I do that, all, that happened in my body. I lost one phosphate molecule, and then it just recycles, keep recycling, keep recycling. ATP is the key to all the energy in the, in, in, on a cellular network, in the, your cellular molecule. So healthy cells, a healthy cell converts ATP, which is the energy of a cell, to ADP, means it's, de it's deficient one phosphate molecule, and then back again, back again, back again. The body sometimes struggles with that. And that's what happens when cells reach a low energy. They can't convert back and forth. Quite, you okay? Everybody good? Fine. Okay. So now I'm going to switch gears. So now you know the science. I'm going to talk about two doctors. The first doctor is Dr. Greg Anderson. He's a, uh, a podiatrist, a foot and ankle surgeon. And he was the inception for this idea. His partner, and they, they have a big clinic, they're a practicing clinic here in Utah. They have 15 doctors, Salt Lake Orthopedic Clinic, and they have a heck of a practice going to 15 doctors. And his, he consulted his partner, Dr. Kate Huntsman, who's a back surgeon, world famous, travels the world and speaks. This guy is a, in the who's who in back surgeons. A lot of times in magazines, he'd be listed in the top 10. Spell his last name. Hunt, Kate Huntsman, just like the famous Utah name, Kate Huntsman. So back surgeon, foot and ankle surgeon. This doctor right here, he would use in, in ankle surgery, when you can't get a bone to fuse, if there's a broken bone and they won't fuse, and that's more, most common in diabetics or someone smoking or just, there could be a host of reasons. 
The only way to get a bone to fuse is, is they'll use what's called a bone stimulator. This is a bone stimulator right here. Here's a sample of one. This is $5,000. It will only be approved by uh, insurance companies if that bone will not fuse after six months. By then, it's ridiculous because they have to go in and do a revision anyway, so it's kind of silly. So that's, what's a, that's a bone stim. Dr. Huntsman, on the other hand, every single back surgery he does, he puts a bone stim on every time because every time he uses a bone stim in the high 90s, they'll get a fusion and they'll no chance for going in for a revision to, re, to do surgery again. So they know that this technology works. And this technology, a bone stim, is approved by the F FDA for fusion of non-unions, or bones. So, this is where it all started. So, Dr. Anderson, these are some of his pictures. Anybody been in a fracture walker before, non-weight bearing? What happens? Atrophy. Atrophy? What, hap what happened to you? You raised your head. What happened? Um, I had a ligament. Yeah. Were you on crutches or a cart? Yeah, so I had crutches first, and then I had that. Yeah? Did, did your legs look different? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So what happens when you become non-weight bearing, these cells, all the tissue, the bone, everything, starts to atrophy. They, uh, they call it bone cast disease. And this is an actual picture. So the funny thing is, a lot of times the treatment for this causes a secondary problem because cells aren't activated. So for, when we talk for non-unions of bones, this is what, this, for example, this is a, that's a, a pimp device that Dr. Anderson uses when they can't get a fracture ankle to heal. So Dr. Anderson, Consulted Dr. Huntsman says, look, I'm using these fracture, I'm using these bone stems here, but I got to show you something. I'm finding that when I use a bone stem, that the tissue on the outside of the bone stem, the bone and tissue, was so healthy. So he consulted Dr. Huntsman and says, hey, I want you to look at this. And so for the course of uh, up to a year, they started looking at this every time they would use a bone stem, and they can see a lot of one you can see visually. Two, I'm going to show you that you can see through X-rays. You can see the the, the bone bone density. So, Dr. Anderson, after a year, they came to me and ex started explaining what was happening here. And they asked me to, uh, they asked me to develop some technology to see if we could do this, to see if we could create something here. And by the way, so the technology, I'm going to back up. The technology they asked me to create is we want to do what we want. We want you to build a device that replicates here and here and not here. I'm going, really? Because it's ne I've never been done before. But, and back up, my background is in consumer product manufacturing. That's all I've ever done my whole life. Everything I've ever built was never built before. So, uh, and I've, I have a great team, and it's a little part of me and a lot of a, a lot of a great team. So, this is the task they gave me. They said, if we can build that, I think we really have something. And the truth is, their thoughts were, this quote, I think we have something that will cure osteoporosis. I'm not saying that here today. That's what they said to me. So the first thought, step one, is, hey, we need to create a blanket. This is the actual first prototype from day one. And I saved it. That, that, is, day, that is the first device ever created. Because they were thinking, wow, if it's working on the bones, we can create this big blanket to cure osteoporosis. That's where we started. And then uh, we found that that you know, was a good idea, but probably not the best place to start it. That's a big project, big project. And I'll explain why we changed. So the second, so 
because Dr. Anderson was a foot and ankle surgeon, he said, hey, let's start by taking the technology of this overflow array and put it in a boot. So this is the boot that I created. This was, this was actually the first commercial product. This was actually prototype, first commercial product. So we built this boot. And it's a good looking boot. And it works incredible. This boot has micro coils in this strut here, in here, in here. And this boot worked phenomenal. These are actual pictures from people that use the boot. And this is important because this is post-op when they've been non-weight bearing. Here's one seven weeks with a star soccer player, by the way. You can't even tell which leg he was non-weight bearing. Where it should look, you can't even, it should look very different. And this boot performed fantastic. They actually started to study at St. Mark's Hospital here where they were using for plantar, plantar fasciitis on people that were the next thing was just surgery and they were seven for seven. But however, there was one problem with this boot. It was so good and so smart. But tell me if you can tell, you know what the problem is? It's heavy. It's too much technology, it was heavy. And people just still wanted to be light and nimble and mo mobile. Even though this was a fantastic idea and a great product, and we spent a lot of money getting here, and I sat in some huge corporate boardrooms of, of billion dollar companies looking at this, but it just was heavy. And at the same time, fracture, what's called a fracture rocker from China were coming in at $37. So it's kind of a collision. And so we, we sat back and thought, we need, we're learning little by little. We are learning, this technology is incredible. Making sure I don't go over time, okay, Joe? This technology is incredible. We need to make it in a, put it in a form that is not just for, you know, whole beds, not just for an ankle, not just for a boot. What is a way we can deliver this technology so everybody can use it for a whole host of things? And that's where we, and that's where we get into the web. So I want to show you a couple of slides here. For example, here is a picture of using, uh, actually this was with the bone stem. And I want you to see, remember I talked about on x-ray? When, the, when the, the bone is really white, that means the bone's very dense. If you look at x ray of someone with osteoporosis, their bones will look more like this area here. We have one lady that's been using our web for four years. They couldn't even do an x-ray to check her bone. They had to do an, uh, uh, MRI, because they couldn't see your bones because they were so gray. Not anymore, because she used our technology. So that's an, so you can see right here what happens in the overflow area, just like I talked about. It's incredible. So this is important because this is where we differentiate between a PIMP device and PIMP, pulsed electromagnetic field, PIMP device, and I'll keep saying that, so pulse, elect, pulse meaning off on, electric meaning it's giving some energy, magnetic meaning magnetic burst, and field, which is an area. The difference between a PIMP and, and our product. And this is where it all, this is where it all started. And this is where we started to really gain traction learning what we had here. So, fracture was healed. Let me see, we'll kind of cover this. So, once again, bone and tissue is very healthy in this area. You can see that, we already covered that slide. So, for example, here are some PEMP devices that are on the market today. Ironically, here's a bed that looks kind of like that. Here's a coil, this one's used for neck. This one's used for neck, and by the way, I have a good the lady who cuts my hair said her husband had neck surgery and he wore one of these and then when he walked by their alarm panel in their home, their alarm panel buzzed. <laughs> and that's important to know because you know what, it was so powerful. And one of the things we're talking about is how ours isn't powerful. Because at some point, you know, too much of anything is bad for you, no matter if it's good for you. So. And it buzzed and it kind of freaked them out because so much power. And, and by the way, uh, 
And here's one, here's a clinical one. Clinical one. Those are big coils. And they make bigger coils because they're trying to drive so much energy. And I'm going to explain why they have to drive so much energy here in a minute. But, so on a coil like this, we'll use this coil. If, if you can imagine this coil sitting here, the magnetic field, there's a north and a south pole just like the Earth, right? Magnetic fields on Earth come out of the north pole, some are circular and grab to the south pole, just like a pimp device here. However, in a device like this, these waves are coming out in a circle, kind of like this mushroom. But on a regular pimp device like this, most of the energy goes into infinity. In other words, these magnetic waves just shoot straight up and go into infinity. Some of them are caught like this. Some are caught and recaptured. We call that the loop wave. But most of it goes into a cone. If you could see a magnetic field on a pimp device, it would look like this cone here. I can even take you on manufacturers' websites of pimp devices today like this, like this one here, and it says, don't worry, you will roll around on your mat long enough that you'll get treatment in the whole area because really on a mat like this, there's these cones sticking up. And the cones are very powerful. And the reason for a cone, by the way, when they heal a bone, they're actually trying to drive a current through the bone. And when you do this, it's actually running a current right through your bone. And that's what's trying to create those osteoblasts to, get, to fuse that bone together. But, so that's what a PIMP device does. And it takes a lot of energy to do that. And they are very effective and they work very well and they fuse bones and they do a lot of things. But also it takes a lot of energy and power to drive them. So, what? Very expensive. So CM2 technology, very different. So, Zach, in my office, in the very corner, there's a brown box about this big. Would you grab me one coil out of there? A little bit my coil. So, very different. In the CM2 technology, instead of this big coil, we use a very tiny micro coil. It's only this big. I'm going to get one and show you with a little circuit board on top. And we do that, and then inside there, inside that little tiny coil is a, is a core and the core does and this is kind of amplified the core does something very unusual than pen the core is capturing remember we talked about this wave this wave the, using a small tiny coil that core is capturing this wave this circular wave perfect thank you sorry it's capturing oh capturing this circular wave. So instead of sending a lot of the energy into space, into infinity, we're sending from the North Pole to the South Pole, and we're just enhancing or capturing that loop part, the loop part of the wave, and enhancing it. That's the difference. So is this, so we say it's like the hybrid or the sweet spot of the pimp of pulse electromagnetic field. And that's what all we're doing is capturing this small part. We're not worried about a big powerful cone and focusing and trying to heal bones. We don't care about that. We're trying to just work just on this loop. So it's just like a big cloud. That's why I call CM2, a big cloud surrounding this. No focus, no anything, because every one of these is creating this loop wave going both sides, every one of those. So, and this is what really this we call a secret sauce, McDonald's, but this is the secret sauce of the Nimbus CM2 technology. Why it's so different it's, and works so well is we just captured and focused on, on really the hybrid or the sweet spot of the wave and not worried about healing bones and things that the, the FDA is worried about. Yeah. You see, uh, okay, so I just, turned this, I just turned this web on and for a reason. This, this is a fantastic product. This de detects magnetic fields and electric fields. Because remember, this is a pulse, electro, or energy, and magne magnetic field. We're doing two things here. Energy and magnetic, both. So this is the meter. You can see that meter. Oh, 
We're a little too sensitive there. So when I said it's a whole field, it's detecting the whole field. And just so you know, I'm not, I'm put there. Just so you know, I'm not pulling your leg. Pause. So there's the magnetic field. But the is, that on? is it on? It's on. Yeah, see this, you can't see the meter probably from there. You can see this meter moving here. Now, And that's, this, is, this is called a Gauss meter. It's measuring the, the strength of that magnetic field, the Gauss meter. And, and G-A-U-S-S, -S, Gauss meter. And that, that's measuring. Now the second thing, this, this is, uh, I'm going to measure an electric field. Which I can probably get, an electric, look, I'm getting it off that TV. Right? But here, see that meter move? So, we're getting a magnetic field, which is pulsing off and on, and an electric field, or energy field. Then I'm going to show you something different. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. When the electric field, let me go back to magnetic field. Magnetic field, here's your magnetic field. That's pulsing off and on. If I put my arm in there, it didn't change at all, did it? It's going right through. So the magnetic field is pulsing, going right through my cells, hitting them, and still, and still continuing, still making that loop. But when I go to an electric field, where'd the energy go? It's getting absorbed into my arm. So that's the two part. That's the good part. That's we talk, we'll talk about raising energy in the cell. Yes? Okay, so say someone has a problem with the low lump. With what? The low lumbar. Yep. You can just actually set the way up on the front of you and it will take care of the low lumbar. Yeah, this, this field, you know, and I'm going to plug it here for a minute. This, even me sometimes, like if I, I like to work out and I'll have a sore shoulder, you think that it has to be right on the shoulder. Let's say shoulder, because it's easy for me to demonstrate. But the truth is, remember, that magnetic field is easily extending probably eight inches here, also back, because this field is like this. So, but I mean, if I was, had a back issue, if my back was troubling, I would just put it in a chair and sit in a chair. But you could put it over the front, too. Yes, answer the question. Because it's a big, even though you think you've got to put it right on it, you don't. But, but people still do it. Yes, Joel? What, Joel? Jeremiah's mother-in-law. So, so the loop wave, and I got five minutes, right? Loop, five minutes. Complete cellular immersion. When I immerse, I mean it's everywhere, just not these focused spots. The loop wave requires less power. The beautiful thing, we don't have to run a lot of power to get it to to run this. So it's, you don't walk by a power panel and make it buzz, because too much energy is probably a bad thing. Just enough to help raise energy of the cell. The third thing, a circular loop wave concentration. We the doctors feel it's the, it is the most beneficial part of the wave, and those x-rays show it. So that's the difference to CM2 technology. That's how we really differ from regular PEMP device. Yes? Can you take a second and just explain the fact that when you plug it into a, a current and you go outlet, right, that's an electrical current that's coming through here, but what's being radiated is a magnetic field. Can you, can you talk a little bit? Well, there's two things. First off, when you plug into a wall here, which is 115 volts, come, uh, when you not using a battery, but the plug, first off, it converts it to low voltage, to 24 volts. Inside the micro coils? No, inside the little box on your plug. I don't have a plug with me. Okay. When you plug on the wall, there's a, oh, right here, right here. Okay, so this converts it to low voltage right off the bat. So you're not running a regular 115 volts here, so that's why it's so very safe, converts it to there. Now, the question was, What's coming out of here? Two things happening. There's a magnetic burst. Boom, 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 boom. Remember, every cell we talked about 
has a north and south pole. That means every time it's a bull, every time you're getting a pulse, that cell is getting moved, exercised, exercised. The second thing during the exercise is there's also energy, the electrical part is radiating from this, creating an energy burst. So not only are the cells getting moved and exercised, the cell has a chance to absorb some of that energy. Because I just showed you, energy was coming from here, and when I put, put my arm on it, it, a lot of it was gone. Where'd it go? It has to go somewhere. Energy just can't disappear. It's getting absorbed into my body. So that's the benefit. Is yeah. that answered or not? Kind of? Yeah, yeah, it does. So, so uh, my question is, would it plug into the receptacle versus not being plugged in the receptacle and using the battery? Is, a, is there a different effect on the wheel? Zero effect. I can put the meter on, I get the same. I'll use what's called the Gauss meter. It'll measure the same strength of the magnetic field. Same strength. Why do you need the box then? To convert. That's to convert. Okay, the box. So, so for example, on the sport web, uh, on, on the sport web, right now we, sh right now we ship it with a battery because it's made for convenience. In April, let the cat out of the bag. We'll start shipping this with a wall plug, by the way, and then the battery will become an accessory. We'll talk about that. So this will be coming with a 12 volt wall plug shortly, and then the battery is an accessory. That's coming done right. So, this is just for fun. Once we get, once we finish, figured out the technology and through this whole process, the doctors and myself, we have 15 plus patents pending or issued on this device. That's a quarter, little over a quarter million dollars right there spent to protect this technology. Why that's important? Because everybody here is going to go out and work hard, and we don't want to turn the corner and watch everybody copying us. So, critical amounts of dollars spent on the intellectual property, and those are actually. Well, I kind of laugh. That's 15 inches, by the way. 15, yeah. So, with the patent that's, that exists already, so how many years would it be before someone can duplicate what, what, what we have? Um, some are as fresh as one, one year now. It means we have 15 more years. It used to be 17, 15 years. Some have been out for three years. So we have 12 to 15 years. And plus, we're applying for a couple new ones next month on some new stuff we're working on, too. What you see now is just first wave. There are more waves coming. I'm not going to talk about more waves coming. But, so we have at least 12 to 15 years of where we're going to protect our property. Question. Yes. The product is being made in China. Yes, good question. The Chinese are notorious for taking American patents into their protection process, duplicating them. American patent process. What is being done to protect that from the Chinese doing a similar thing? To two you? things. Two things. Oh, sorry, Joe, I'm hurrying. Two, two things. One is, I, my, I don't know a lot, but all, my whole career has been manufacturing, whether in Central America or Asia. This product, by the way, is coming from multiple places and then assembled in one factory where I've been working with the same guy for 20 years. For, for that's the number one thing you can do yeah. is to control. Really? The left hand has no clue what the right hand's doing. And even when I travel to Asia with all these factories, I don't have an even Nimbus business card we, to prolong that. The second thing is we have pending patents in China as well. Good. So that's a, those, those are two things. But I'm aware of that because I've had that. And I've learned the hard way. I've, learned, I've been to Canton Fair one time and saw my product, not this one, all over in different booths, and that was a whole different, different question. So, so these microcoils, remember, three actions happening. A pulse magnetic fields, ener energy being transferred in that wave. Well, two things, okay. By the way, this Nobel Prize laureate, Dr. Otto Warburg, healthy people had higher cellular voltage between 70 and 100, 100 microvolts. The measure, remember, cell is like a battery. And those with chronic illness had a voltage of 30 to 50 microvolts. He also documented that many cancer patients had a voltage of 15 to 20. It's interesting. Healthy cells have higher energy. Not all cells have the same energy. Heart, a heart cell, for example, has the highest energy in the body, and heart cells are so much energy that cancer cells can't survive. That's why there's no such thing as cancer of the heart. So, but it's clearly safely documented. Healthy cells have higher energy. So getting energy in cells is a positive thing. Um, 
sicker dying cells often, by the way, you've all seen videos about this, clumping of cells. It can cause by a lot of things, but one of the common, one of the most common causes is low voltage in cells. There's not enough energy to repel. And we'll talk more about this tomorrow. By the way, this example, the pictures that I, these are pictures off my cell phone. And by the way, this was two weeks ago. This is my blood. Pretty bad, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed to tell you. This is my blood after PAMP. <laughs> And this is my blood on, after a, like an hour in PAMP. I couldn't even get it to focus because the blood was so active, those red blood cells were moving so fast. That was an hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's, it's different for every person. So just because one time I tested Gabriel and his started out, his blood cells looked like this, right? It's just different, you know? I drink too much Diet Coke. It's probably half the reason right there. That's for Diet Coke on cells and Diet, red blood cells and Diet Coke. Yep. And that, that creates and differences in the By the way, clump cells do not mean that you're sick. But oftentimes sick people have clump cells. So don't freak don't freak out. Clumped cells or stacked cells, which is called the Rolu effect, doesn't mean you're sick. However, people oftentimes their sick or diseases most often will have clump cells. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you're sick. So don't if if we ever do a blood test, you want to do it, and you see that, don't panic, because that's me right there, and I'm standing here before you. Dale, how long after you're off the web will your cells start to stack again? Different for every person. We, I, I can't answer that, because it's different for every person. That's why I recommend people use the web every day. You, you know, and, and I, I don't, it, it's just so different. I wish I could say we've documented it, but it's been so different for everybody. But, but I notice that uh, for me, about a day, you know, it'll, day, you know, I try, I have, a, I want a my office chair, so when I sit down, I just hit go. And just get treatment, and then I, that's what I do. You only do 60 minutes once a day, or do you do more? If someone said, hey, peg me the perfect treatment from everything I've read about PIMP, if, if you had 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night, it's probably just perfect. If I would say the perfect, but it, nothing's ever perfect. The red blood cell, we talked about the separate cell. Why the red blood cell is so important? Red blood cell is the superhighway in your body that transport every bit of oxygen and every nutrient. It's everything to you. When you breathe in, oxygen goes to your lung, the alveoli grab that oxygen, the capillaries right there transfer that oxygen to the red blood cells. The red blood cells is what's carrying it right now to my mind, to my liver, to my to my hand, everywhere. The same thing when I eat my nutrients from my stomach lining, through my, through my small intestine, grabbed in a capillary there, my red blood cells are what drag it everywhere through my whole body. So healthy cells, especially red blood cells being separated, active, are critically important. That's the only way that gets distributed. Um, I'm gonna skip. This is the last chart. This is a graph. If you take a, here's these crazy magnets. The surface area of this magnet, and calculate this side, this side, and around this side. This is kind of like a red blood cell. Remember, this red blood cell job, among other things, is to grab oxygen, a nutrition that you eat, grab it here inside the molecules, and take it all throughout my body. Okay? When I start stacking them together, I don't want to pinch my fingers. You can see how the surface area is reduced now. Now if I have that six of them there, I have this surface area, this surface area, and here. Here's a chart. Once you reach eight red blood cells stacked together, and I showed you my chart, I had 15 or so and some. Once you reach eight, the capacity of that red blood cell, the surface area is reduced by 50%. Just, that's just a mathematical equation. Not my opinion, that's just a math. So, Healthy cells, especially healthy red blood cells, are critical to your body. Everything in your body is about oxygen. Needs oxygen, needs good nutrition. And like I said, I, you don't have, I can print this for you. Um, and I'm going to probably end right here. So what are the cellular effects of CM2? Increased energy level of the 
Remember trying to create that ATP molecule, increased energy? Red, red blood cells separation, the opposite of Rolu effect. Rolu effect is when they stack. Increased oxygen and nutrient distribution. By the way, a cell, as it absorbs, as it drops off that nutrition and oxygen, it also grabs the waste product, which is CO2, takes it back to your lungs, and that's what I expel out. So waste buildup, the only way to get it out of your body is for you know, that red blood cell. Grab the CO2 and get it out throughout your whole body. Um, improve blood flow in the small capillaries. By the way, a capillary in your body, by the way, I just read last night, study done by the University of Washington. If you take the surface area of all the capillaries in your body, over a thousand square miles. That's how complex your body is. Those capillaries are so small, they're the diameter of one cell. When you stack cells together, you can imagine how hard it is for those cells to get through those capillaries. That's why free-floating, high-energy cells are one of the key ways to get oxygen where you want it to be. Uh, and last thing, high-energized cells boost apoptosis, and that's the death of cells. You have to have cells dying to generate new cells. You want old, tired cells to die off so your body can generate new cells. And that's, that's what we believe CM2 will boost. I'm going to stop there because I've taken 58 minutes. I'm supposed to be here 45. And I'll be here all day so we can answer more questions and I'll pick up. And I'm going to turn the time back over to Joel. And thanks for your time. And write down your questions because I'd love to answer them later.